Alright, in this video we'll be uh, continuing with the C-sharp video tutorials. In this video uh, we'll be learning about checkboxes. So a checkbox uh, is a control in C-sharp. Uh, a checkbox appears as a small box with some uh, text. So it's similar to a radio button except basically you can select uh, more than one at once. So clicking on an empty checkbox uh, causes a, che uh, a check mark to appear in it. If a check mark uh, already appears in a checkbox, clicking it removes the check mark so you can uncheck it or check it. So they're similar to radio buttons, except that uh, checkboxes are not mutually exclusive. You can have one or more checkboxes in a group, uh, and any number of them can be selected at at any time. So when you want to create a checkbox on a form, you can use the checkbox control. So when you want to create a checkbox on on a form, uh, you can use the checkbox control. Uh, basically, you can find them in the, in the toolbox for now. So just in the common control section of the toolbox. We'll be uh, learning how to create those objects later on. So the, the checkbox control uh, has a text property, so let's just make a note of that here. So I forgot to click that. Can that load in the back? We'll see if it can. Okay, so let's just say we have uh, an example. Or just, let's just start with some notes first, actually. So the text, uh, the checkbox control, uh, so the checkbox controls text property. checkbox control uh, text property so like a radio button uh, a checkbox has a can has a text property as well and a check property uh, I think that's the same as in as with radio buttons so checkbox control uh, so checkbox controls have a text property. So it holds a text that is displayed next to the checkbox. Uh, so the checkbox control can have a text property. You can set it to whatever, such as like juice, tea, pop, whatever that we said last time, coffee. So whatever drink you want. Orange juice, whatever. So then uh, the checkbox control also has a text property. So I should say that and then this one here. So checkbox control also has a check property. The checkbox control also has a checked property. Check checkbox controls a uh, checked property. So like radio buttons, checkboxes have a checked property. I think it's the exact same thing. If you haven't seen that video, it's in the playlist before this one. So when a checkbox is selected or checked, so sometimes I use the word selected other, uh, otherwise other than checked. Just be careful, there may be a similar method that it like uh, is, such as is selected or selected, which is like checked. 
It's like that in Java. Sometimes that topic is confusing. So when a checkbox is selected or checked, its check property uh, is set to true. So when a checkbox control is deselected or unchecked, its check property is set to false. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So now let's do a code example. Uh, so working with checkbox controls and code. So in code you can determine whether a checkbox control is selected by testing its check property. For example, suppose a form has a checkbox control name, just checkbox. Uh, camel cased or whatever. So we can use the we can use it we can do an example here. If checkbox dot checked we can say message box dot show you selected uh, checkbox one. Oops, sorry. So just as, it's similar to like uh, it's basically similar to uh, to radio buttons, except basically I don't think they work as a group. So let's do a GUI example here. There's nothing about uh, about them working as a group in a in the docs, uh, so I don't think they work as a group like radio buttons. Radio buttons work as a group since they're not mutually exclusive. I think that's what we just said. Okay, did I already pass that? Apologize. So let's make a note of that too. Okay, so actually they did mention some group stuff. Sorry, I think I skipped over that, so check boxes. No, well, I think we might have talked about it. Uh, I just didn't note, I didn't note anything down, so check boxes are similar to radio buttons, except that check boxes are not mutually exclusive, so let's write that down here. Okay, so it says you can have one or more check boxes in a group and any number any number of them can be selected at any given time. So uh, perhaps I don't think they really need to have a group to be honest because they don't it's not like you need to like you it's not like if you select one you can't select the other one so it's basically you could just select them all if you want in that case basically I guess they still work in like they just kind of you can still think of them like for example you could have some in a panel some in a group box or just some on the form uh, technically they'll be in a group but they don't really work together as a group so I don't think it really matters Uh, so we want to use a checkbox on a form, you just use a checkbox control. So there's nothing about them working together, uh, about them working together or basically by, them, by themselves. The docs doesn't talk about that uh, pretty much. I don't think it really matters in that, in that case. 
unlike radio buttons where we had some more uh, notes about the groups and all that. So let's just try an example here for the nothing crazy. Uh, not a crazy lab, which we'll, we we will be not. We'll be doing a bigger lab uh, coming up probably in the next tutorial. So in this one, we'll just do like a small mini lab. It's not really a lab; it's just a quick example. Uh, so let's try that. So I'll open the designer here, so just you can get that set up. If you're following along, I'm in Rider once again. You can use Visual Studio, uh, not Visual Studio Code, but just the actual vis Visual Studio. You can use Rider. It's a free trial, or if you're a student, you can get it for free by using your email, your student email. I think even if you were a student in the past, that that should work fine too. Uh, I'm not trying to get JetBrain software for free. We're trying, uh, we're have them lose money but if you like if you know someone from if you know someone or if like you have a family member sister brother whatever uncle aunt or someone that went to school well you can talk to them and see if they can help you out uh but yeah i'd say the jet brain software is pretty expensive though i think it's overpriced to be honest i don't know why it's almost like a thousand, i think it's over a thousand bucks for someone who's like in the space and makes a big salary I guess that's nothing but if that's if you're like just someone who's starting out that's that's a lot obviously but again if you have a student email everything's free so not sure why they do that uh, okay so we have I think you have to renew them every year or two or three or something perhaps uh, something like that, maybe even longer, maybe four years. You have to you have to renew it. I'm not sure if you can use the same email or not. I haven't. I'm just kind of getting into renewing it soon here. Uh, but anyway, so we have pretty much. I recommend using JetBrain software though. Either way, uh, so check them out. They're really good. Uh, so let's just go with a group box here. So we'll take a group box. Where is that? Not seeing it here. Okay, here we go. So we'll go with the group box here. We'll just kind of put it, uh, make like kind of like a little square in this form. Like that. We can, don't need to worry about the name. We know how to do that from previous, previous tutorials. You guys can check that out if you don't know how to do that. We went over group boxes pretty recently. Okay, so we'll just go with uh, three check boxes then. So one. Why is that so small? Okay. So check box one. We can go with uh, vegetables or fruits. Let's go with uh, vegetables are fine. So we'll just change the identifier here. So I'll just click that tab. So the bounding box is selected, then I'll click the identifier, the name, property. And I'll just change this to like garlic or something. Hit OK. Uh, we can change the auto size to, to true, and then we can change the font size as well to 36. Hit OK, and then we'll go with uh, the name to garlic. So the sorry, the text property. Okay, so let's just Control C that, Control V twice. Oh, what happened there? There we go. Why didn't it print out garlic? That's weird. Okay, so we'll just go with that. I'll just size it about a little bit better. That's fine. So we'll just change checkbox one. We'll change that to like. Uh, onions again staples of cooking so then we'll go with uh, choose already set we'll just change the text property to onion it's 
change this one. <laughs> Excuse me, we'll go with uh, green onion with this one. Another good spice to add to your, or vegetable to add to your meats and fish when you're frying it. Whatever. So we'll go with uh, green onion. We'll change the text property to green onion. Oops. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, could want a purple onion or something. That's fine. A red onion. We don't really need that, so that's fine. So we have three. Go with a button here at the bottom. Okay, button. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll just change the. Uh, name to OK button, the identifier uh, we'll go with the text property to OK so that's fine, uh, we can just double click the OK button then to generate the event handler which we'll be coding uh, when we learn about more about objects, but we'll we'll code the inner body of it, not not the definition. So for the inner body of the code, we'll just have three choices with the message uh, dialog box of the same uh, example as the radio button. Did we miss something? Did I, sorry, did I miss something here? I'm just having a look. Nope, oh, okay, I thought I missed a lab. So then in the lab that we're going to do, we'll probably have both checkboxes and radio buttons. The big lab. Okay, so let's go with uh, some... Let's move this window to the right. Kind of getting bored of these colors now. wonder if there's a better theme. Uh, okay, I'm have that maybe I'll try the default rider see if that one's all right right now I'm in uh, rider no I'm in resharper plus that the if you're interested in that it's uh, it's okay it's kind of kind of bland there's like a lot of light blue and white a little bit of pink you can't really see them the colors aren't that uh, bright though but they're not terrible okay so we'll have uh, if we'll go with garlic why oh, did I not call it checkbox I didn't let's just maybe try to fix this here so garlic we'll change that identifier to garlic checkbox with camel case we'll go with onion change the same thing to onion checkbox Green onion, <coughs> excuse me, we'll change that to green onion checkbox. Oops, I saw one. Okay, so green onion checkbox. Uh, we have all the, everything set up here, so we'll just go back to the code. So now, if, hopefully that'll change. So if garlic check, why did that change like that? Okay, so if garlic checkbox, why why is everything blue? Not sure why they did that. They should have had a different color there. Keyword should be one color, uh, maybe even separated, but built-in keywords should be one color, object should be one color, and user-defined variable sh or and name should be one color, another color. Then you can also split them up into identifiers of a certain name. Uh, access modifiers and all that to color code them properly. Is that pink or blue? I can't even tell. I think it is pink, but they're, it's so similar you can't even tell. You can kind of tell, but not really. So if garlic, so anyway, so if garlic checkbox, uh, so if garlic checkbox dot checked, you may be asking why I think the colors are important. Uh, it's because you stare at them for a long time, you kind of want it to be interesting. If you're using the same thing every day for a long time, like hours and hours. 
You may want to have some kind of interesting color scheme that kind of makes it more fun, at least, more coding more fun. Maybe that's just me, but you'll understand once you get into it more. But if you have, so here if we just have if garlic checkbox dot checked, then we'll say okay, then we'll have a message box here, we'll say message box dot show, and then we'll say Or just say hey, you, yeah. So we can just say selected, selected garlic. So now here we'll say if uh, onion checkbox dot checked. Then we'll say message box dot show selected onion. Oops. If uh, oops, sorry, not anchovies. If uh, what do we have? What was the last one that we had? Green onion. So if green onion checkbox dot checked, then we'll say message box. Dot show will go with a uh, selected green onion. So what's going to happen here? So once again, we have an event handler that handles a click event. So it's 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 related to the OK button. So when the OK button is clicked. Once again, the event handler listens for an event. Once the event, once the event occurs, then it handles it. Uh, so it's, it says, "Okay, well, if the garlic checkbox is checked while the okay, well, if the garlic checkbox is checked while when the OK button is hit, uh, then it'll say all these things." Once again, well, if they're all Selected at the same time, you may get three pops up, uh, three pop-up windows. So just be careful with that. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. But that, those are checkbox controls. Uh, you use them across a wide array of different languages. Uh, so C Sharp uses them. They're important. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the, uh, most of the notes here. Actually, there's just a little bit here to go over. One more thing. Okay. So the check changed event. Anytime, uh, so anytime a radio button or a checkbox control, anytime a radio button or a checkbox controls checked property changes. So anytime a radio button or checkbox controls checked property changes. Let's just let's just note this down actually. Did that to my keyboard again. But it works otherwise. That's weird. Okay. Some kind of glitch in Rider. The keyboard stops working. So if that happens, the quick way it looks like I fix it is if you're using Windows or maybe it'll work on a Mac, but go down to your search bar, quickly just click on it, type something, and then re-click on the Rider screen, and it should work if you get if you get that glitch. Or your keyboard just stops working. In Rider at least. Because there's nothing wrong with my keyboard, it looks like. Uh, so it may just be some kind of glitch. I noticed C Line has its own glitches too. Uh, perhaps because not enough people use them to catch those glitches. For example, PyCharm and IntelliJ are 100% free open source uh, IDEs, whereas those don't have any glitches really. I never really noticed any because perhaps there's a bigger community, perhaps like bigger forums where people talk about that stuff. And if they have, if someone says, oh, well, uh, well, they want to talk about uh, pretty much if they have an error, they can just write it in the forum and then the the staff or the the support, they fix it quickly. But if, if it's just if something you have to pay for, a software version that's paid for, there's much less people that use it. Therefore, no one really talks about uh, the errors and stuff. Perhaps that's why. 
But there is an IntelliJ and a PyCharm forum out there somewhere. Uh, if you're interested in that. But otherwise, here we have the checked changed event. So at uh, basically any time, uh, let's just say, any time a radio button or checkbox control uh, checked property change changes a checked changed event happens so if you want some action to immediately take place when the user selects or deselects a radio button or checkbox control you can create a checked change event handler for the control and write the desired code in that event handler So to create a checked changed event handler for a radio button or checkbox, simply double click the control in the designer. Okay. So basically you can have a control that instead of having a button and then checking whether it's checked, you, it also has a checked changed event. So it's, some, it's another event entirely, which is different than a checked property it's a little bit confusing I don't think we do I don't think we actually did this in because it looks like they're talking about this in regards to radio buttons and checkboxes at the same time I don't think we actually had this we don't we didn't discuss uh, this with radio buttons yet so in the lab we'll probably be working with that So if you, for, for example, if you select, if you check this and uncheck it, the event, the check change event will have fired off twice. If you check it, or if you, yeah, if you check it and it's checked, the check change event will fire off once. You can have, you can have an event handler to do something when that happens, aside from it being checked uh, and using the OK button to fire it off or to do, to work with the, uh, checkbox if that makes sense. It's a little confusing to just talk about, uh, so we'll have to just, we'll probably be working with a bigger, we'll be working with that in, uh, in the lab here, I think. So the check change event, uh, anytime a radio button or checkbox control property changes, a check change event happens. So if you want some action to immediately take place when the user selects or deselects a radio button or checkbox control, so if you want an action to take place when a checkbox slash radio button is checked or unchecked right away, basically, if you want it to happen right when that happens, you can create a checked change event, a checked change event. handler, I guess. Uh, so to do that, basically, uh, we, well, yeah, so you can, and the one way to do it is to, to use a design window to just double click it and create the event handler that way. We'll talk about, uh, creating the objects later on for the check change event handler and the, the checkbox objects and all radio button, uh, objects. Uh, so, we'll be working with that in the lab, uh, so thanks for watching guys, we'll be doing that in the next video. If you guys want to check that out, uh, feel free to sub uh, like and subscribe to the channel for more programming and investing tutorials. Uh, if you guys like the video, you can like and subscribe to the channel to support the channel. Uh, if you want to see more videos or continuation of the series, other languages, or any investing uh, related to programming or anything like that, you guys can check it out. Uh, so thanks for watching guys, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one, take care.